Hey folks, my name is Nathan Johnston and welcome to lecture 10 of Introductory Linear Algebra. Today we're going to learn about something called the transpose of a matrix, okay? And this is a new operation that's actually quite different from anything that we've seen before, but fortunately it's actually very, very straightforward, okay? So it's much simpler than matrix multiplication that we saw in the previous lecture. Okay, so what the transpose of a matrix is, is it's an operation that just interchanges the rows and columns of that matrix, okay? So if you've got some M by N matrix to start with, then its transpose is now an N by M matrix, right? It used to have M rows and N columns. Now it has N rows and M columns. And all it is, the way you get it, is you just sort of interchange in row and column indices, okay? So whereas the IJ entry used to be AIJ, now the IJ entry is AJI, okay? So whatever entry used to be, you know, in the IJ entry, now it's in the JI entry. Okay, and the way we denote the transpose is just A with a superscript T. So if A is your original matrix, then A with a superscript T, that's the transpose of a matrix. Okay, so let's just do a couple quick examples to make sure that we understand this definition, okay? To make sure we understand how to compute a transpose of a matrix. Okay, and sort of the way to think about this is if you're given some matrix, so 1, 3, minus 2, 4 in this case, then the way to compute the transpose of it is while well, you're interchanging rows and columns, and one way to think about that is you're reflecting the matrix across the main diagonal, okay? So I've sort of drawn on a green line here. I'm just gonna imagine reflecting the matrix across that green diagonal line, and what I get when I do that is the transpose, okay? So anything on that green diagonal line, the entries one and four, they're just gonna stay where they are. They don't move. But then the minus two and the three, they have to swap spots, okay? I'm sort of reflecting their positions across that diagonal line. So now the three is gonna be down there and you know, the minus two moves up to the top right. And that gives me the transpose matrix, right? Okay, I mean, if you wanna go back and think about this a little bit more directly in terms of the definition, okay? The one, one entry, well, now that's just the one, one entry. It didn't move. The one, two entry, well, now that's the two, one entry. The two one entry, now that's the one two entry. You're just interchanging the row and column subscripts and the two of two entry is now the two two entry. So it didn't change, right? You just swap the I and the J, the one and the two in those two off diagonal cases. All right, and this works with non-square matrices just fine as well, okay? So if we start off with a two by four matrix, this matrix B here, okay? Then the transpose of it, again, just sort of imagine drawing on a diagonal line going through the diagonal entries, the one one and the two two entries in this case. Okay, and then just reflect the matrix across that line. Or another way of thinking about this even is just read the rows, but place them in columns. Okay, so the transpose, it's gonna be this. It started off as a two by four matrix, now it's a four by two matrix. Okay, whereas the first row used to be one, four, zero, seven, now the first column is one, four, zero, seven. The second row used to be two minus three, six, five, and now the second column is two minus three, six, five. Okay, so the transpose just interchanges rows and columns. It swaps them around. Okay, and as always, we've introduced a new mathematical operation. Let's look at what properties it has. Okay, so theorem time. What properties does the transpose of a matrix have? Okay, and three of these properties are gonna be very, very not surprising. So I'm just gonna go over them super quickly. The other property though is quite surprising. So that's the one that we're actually gonna prove. Okay, so the first property, not surprising. If you transpose a matrix, and then transpose it again, you just get back to where you started, right? So if you turn rows into columns and then turn them back into rows, you're just getting the original matrix back again, right? If you if you do, oh, I, IJ becomes JI, then becomes IJ, well, that's back where you started, okay? So transposing twice has the same effect as doing nothing, okay? So A transpose transpose equals A, not surprising. A plus B transpose is just the sum of the individual transposes. Again, not surprising because and basically both of these operations are just happening entry-wise, right? A plus B, that's entry-wise addition. And then transpose, well, that just moves where those entries are around. Well, you could equivalently just move the entries around, move the entries around, and then add up because everything's just happening entry-wise. Nothing surprising there in property B. Property D, also not surprising, okay? If you do a matrix times a scalar and then transpose, same thing as if you transpose and then multiply by a scalar, because these are both entry-wise op operations, not surprising. The surprising property here is property C, okay? If you do a product and then transpose, well, yeah, you get the same thing as if you transpose individually and then product and then multiply, but you have to be really, really careful. The order of the multiplication changes, okay? So this is not a typo, right? When I do 
A times B and then transpose, what I get is B transpose times A transpose. The transpose sort of swapped the order of multiplication. Okay, this is not the same thing as A transpose B transpose. All right, so that's the property that we're gonna prove. We're gonna prove property C here. You can prove all of the other properties in a very analogous manner, just work with the relevant definitions. But let's prove this property C, A B transpose equals B transpose A transpose. All right. So again, just for the sake of sort of pinning down things a little bit more precisely, I'm gonna specify what dimensions everything are living in. So the first matrix A, I'm just gonna specify that it's got M rows and N columns. And then the second matrix B, I'm gonna specify that it has N rows and P columns, okay? And just remember this, these Ns here really do have to match. That's why I made them match there. Otherwise the matrix multiplication doesn't make sense in the first place, okay? And then I is just gonna index some row in the product A times B, and J is gonna index some column in the product A times B. Okay. All right. And then what we've got to do, we want to show that two matrices are equal to each other. And the way you do that is you show that every entry of the matrix on the left is equal to uh, the corresponding entry of the matrix on the right. So I want to show that the IJ entry of the matrix on the left, remember the matrix on the left was AB transpose. I want to show that that equals the IJ entry of B transpose times A transpose. So let's compute this IJ entry and simplify as much as we can. Okay. So AB transpose, the IJ entry of that is the ji entry of just a times b, right? Because that's what the transpose does. It interchanges rows and columns, so it just swaps these row and column subscripts. ij becomes ji. Okay, and then the ji entry of a times b, well, now let's just use our definition of matrix multiplication. Okay, so remember, the way that this works is your outer subscripts are gonna be whatever entry you want. Here I want the ji entry, so those are my outer subscripts. j on the left, i on the right. J on the left, I on the right. And then your inner subscripts are always gonna match and you add up over all possible values of those inner subscripts. Okay, so one, one and two, two, all the way up to N, N. Okay, in other words, dot product of Jth row of A with Ith column of B. All right, and then not much more we can do there. That's sort of as simplified as possible. That's, that's what that IJ entry of AB transpose equals. So now let's do the same thing with B transpose A transpose. Let's compute the IJ entry of B transpose A transpose. And our hope here is that this is gonna be the same quantity. All right, so this time we've gotta do the matrix multiplication first. Okay, so let's use the definition of matrix multiplication. We want the IJ entry of this product. So I take um, you know, the I1 entry of the matrix on the left and multiply it by the 1J entry of the matrix on the right and then do the same thing for I2 and 2J and so on down the line. Again, your outer subscripts or whatever the subscripts down there are. I on the left, J on the right. I on the left, J on the right. And your inner subscripts are always gonna match one, one, two, two, all the way up to N, N, and you add up over all possible values of those inner subscripts. All right, so there, I use the definition of matrix multiplication. And now I've got a whole bunch of entries of transposed matrices. Well, all the transpose does is swaps the subscripts. So B transpose, the IJ entry of B transpose, that's just, sorry, the I1 entry of B transpose, that's just the one I entry of B itself. And then similarly, uh, the one J entry of A transpose, that's just the J1 entry of A itself, okay? So that's all I'm doing in this step. I'm just removing all these transposes and the way that I do that is I have to swap all these subscripts. So I2 becomes two I, two J becomes J2 and so on. That's how I get rid of the transpose. All right, great. Now I've simplified that as much as possible, okay? I've expressed this IJ entry in terms of the entries of A and B themselves, all right? And now I just stare at these two quantities really, really hard and I try to convince myself that they're the same. Well, I've got an AJ1 times B1I. Oh, that's exactly what this term here is, right? AJ1 times B1I. The fact that they're in the opposite order doesn't matter. These are real numbers and real number multiplication is commutative, all right? So this first term equals this first term. Similarly, the second term equals this second term, and so on down the line. All of these terms just match up, so they're the same, okay? These are the same quantity, so we conclude that the matrices are the same as well, because all of their entries are the same, right? So yeah, A, B transpose equals B transpose, A transpose. The transpose, it just had the effect of, you know, transposing each of the matrices and swapping the order of multiplication. Alrighty, so let's just do a couple examples, okay, to make sure that we're comfortable with this, this idea. And maybe it's helpful to see an actual numerical example showing that, yeah, AB transpose does equal B transpose A transpose, but not A transpose B transpose. So let's just make up a few random matrices. There's an A, there's a B, and here's a C that's not square. 
All right, and let's do a couple matrix multiplications and transposes, okay? So to start off with a transpose is just, well, I mean, the two and the three swap spots, right? B transpose, the zero and the minus two are gonna swap spots. The off diagonal entries just swap, right? And then C transpose, well, if C is a two by three matrix, then C transpose is gonna be a three by two matrix. I mean, these rows are just gonna become its columns, right? All right, so there's the transposes of those matrices, and now let's multiply things together and see how it works with matrix multiplication. Okay, so if you do A times B, I'm going to go through this calculation more quickly than in the previous lecture, because hopefully you're a little bit more comfortable with matrix multiplication now. But remember, what it is, is it's rows of A dotted with columns of B. Okay, so this top left entry, minus one, where did that come from? It was this row, one, two, dotted with three minus two. So it was three plus minus four, which is minus one. Top right, right entry is 1, 2 dotted with 0, 1. Bottom left entry is 3, 4 dotted with 3, minus 2. And bottom right entry was 3, 4 dotted with 0, 1. Okay, so that's our product AB. The product A transpose B transpose, well, you just do the same thing here. Okay, if I want to compute A transpose B transpose, then you just do rows dotted with columns. Row dotted with column row dot with column, and row dot with column to get these four entries down here. Okay, and importantly, notice that, hey, this matrix over here is not the transpose of this matrix over here, right? So doing the product and then the transpose, it's not the same as doing the transposes individually and then the product, unless you flip the order of multiplication. If you do it the other way around, if you compute B transpose times A transpose, so now you're doing rows of B transpose, dotted with columns of A transpose, right? So row dotted with column, row dotted with column, uh, and then row dotted with column, and row dotted with column. Then you get these four entries, and then look at this matrix and compare it to this one on the left. Those are transposes of each other, okay? So if you do a product and then a transpose, you do get the same thing as doing the transposes individually and then the product as long as you swap the order of multiplication, as long as you turn the A, B into B transpose, A transpose. All right, so those are the transpose of each other. So that illustrates that property C from the previous theorem. Okay, as, as another way of seeing that, to, you know, this sort of this matrix, A transpose, B transpose, can't possibly be the right one to look at, let's just think about sizes of matrix ma multiplication. If I do A times C, well, I get some matrix. The point is just that matrix exists. It's a, that product is a two by three matrix, okay? But if I try to do, uh, okay, and then if I do C transpose, A transpose, that also exists. I happen to get a three by two matrix in that case. Okay, but if I try to do it the other way, if I try to compute A transpose, C transpose, so if I just try to multiply together the transposes individually, well then what'll I get? Well, I'll get a two by two times a three by two, and oh shoot, the inner dimensions don't match up. So this matrix doesn't actually e even exist, okay? So that sort of hints at why we have to swap the order of matrix multiplication, because the transpose swaps the sizes of the matrix. So if you leave the order of multiplication the same, well, all of a sudden the inner dimensions aren't the same anymore, okay? So maybe you can't multiply them, okay? It turns those inner dimension, the transposes turn the inner dimensions into the outer dimensions. So you have to swap the order of multiplication as well to make everything work out. Alrighty, so let's just ramp this idea up a little bit more. We've talked about, hey, what do you do if you've got a product of two matrices all transposed? Well, what if you've got a product of three matrices all transposed? Well, it turns out you don't need to do too much work uh, to figure out what happens in this case. We've already done the hard work, okay? In particular, what you can do is you can just throw extra parentheses around everything. If I just group A and B together and just think of AB as one matrix, okay, then what I get is I've got AB, that's one matrix, times C, that's another matrix, all transposed. Okay, and then I can use my rule about, you know, matrix times matrix transpose. That says, well, I can just swap the order of this product here. I can move that C out in front and bring the transpose on them individually, right? So here, I just used part C of that theorem from up above. It's second matrix transposed times first matrix, AB, all transposed. Okay, and now I can use that rule again. Here, I've got a product of two matrices transposed, so just swap the order of multiplication. Okay, and when I unravel all of that, what I get at the end of the day is ABC all transposed equals C transpose, B transpose, A transpose, okay? So again, the idea is the same. 
You can apply the transpose to each of them individually as long as you completely flip the order of matrix multiplication. Whatever came last now comes first, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one, and so on. And this works no matter how many matrices you have. If you have a product of four matrices, well, yeah, it's the product of the individual transposes as long as you completely flip the order, okay? And same as five, same uh, rule works with five and six and however many matrices you have. Okay, as one final property of the transpose of a matrix, let's see how it behaves when we apply it to vectors. And in particular, before we can take the transpose of it, we're gonna need to give a shape to those vectors. So let's just assume from now on that if ever the shape of a vector is important, we want it to be a column vector, right? We could always arrange it in either order, either as a row vector or as a column vector, but just for the sake of having a convention, we're always, always, always gonna arrange our vectors as column vectors from now on, if shape matters. Okay. So let's suppose that we've got two column vectors, okay? Then what happens if we compute this matrix product V transpose W, right? This is a matrix product now. This is a matrix multiplication that we can do now because, you know, column vectors really are matrices, right? If they're living in n-dimensional space, then W is what? It's got n rows in one column. And V transpose, well, if V is a column vector with n rows in one column, then V transpose is going to be have one row and n columns. So that's a product we can do, right? These are matrices, okay? In particular, it's gonna be one by n times n by one. And when we do this matrix multiplication, the inner dimensions match, they're both n. The outer dimensions are both one. So we're gonna get a one by one matrix when we do this product. In other words, we're gonna get a number. Okay, so let's do that product, right? And the product that you get, the number that you get is just this number right here which hopefully you recognize, right? This is the first entry of the two vectors multiplied together, plus the product of the second entries, plus the product of the last entries, and all the ones in between, of course. That is exactly the dot product of those two vectors. Okay, so the transpose and matrix multiplication taken together give us a way of sort of recovering the dot product. It gives us sort of a link between this earlier vector operation that we saw. And we're going to use this property a lot going throughout this course because it gives us sort of a way of simplifying a lot of ugly matrix products that we're going to see later on, okay? So for now, just keep this property in the back of your mind. If you ever see something like V transpose times W, that's the exact same thing as W, or, sorry, as V dotted with W. It's just another way of writing down the dot product as long as you're thinking of V and W both as column vectors. Alrighty, so that'll do it for today. That's enough about the transpose. I'll see you next class when we start talking about powers of matrices.